Hi everyone, so today I'm presenting a paper with Danai, Michaelis and Rebecca, Improving Compliance with COVID-19 Guidance, a Workplace Field Experiment. My name is Johannes Lose and I will guide you through this presentation. So the whole theme of the paper is that voluntary compliance with COVID-19 guidelines might be limited. So what we wanted to try out in a field experiment is whether well-established behavioral interventions like social norms, pledging and messenger effects can improve compliance in a workplace setting. So we went into a busy workplace with around 120 employees, 70 or five of them on site, and they were moving around between offices and the shop floor. And there was some worries by management that they might be dropping compliance with existing COVID-19 guidance. So we did a 12 week intervention study with alternating intervention two-week periods and fellow one-week periods. So in total, there were three interventions that we tested. The first one was a social norms intervention. So in the social norms intervention, we elicited social norms at the beginning of the study. And then afterwards, in the intervention week, we sent in the emails to all employees a statement saying, the majority of your colleagues believes that you should keep everyone safe by having your lunch at your desk or outdoors. So we had a pledging intervention. In the pledging intervention, all employees got a document that stated clearly the six main guidelines regarding COVID-19, and they could sign this document promising to comply with the COVID-19 guidance. The messenger intervention happened in three steps. In the first step, we let employees reflect on the importance of different guidelines, and the theme we elicit from these um, reflections is that the most important aspect is to protect everyone. And then during the intervention weeks, we first had a competition in the first week where employees were asked to design a COVID-19 poster. And then in the remaining two weeks, these posters were displayed around the workplace. We have two different kind of outcome measures. The first kind of outcome measure is a subjective outcome measure where we asked employees at the end of a work day each day to uh, answer two short questions. The first question was whether I have complied with COVID-19 guidance at work on a seven point scale. And the second question was whether my coworkers have complied with COVID-19 guidance at work on a seven point scale. We wanted to have both because we worried about overstating your own compliance. Uh, we complement these subjective outcome measures with an objective outcome measure, hand sanitizer usage. Uh, so there were around 20 sanitizer sta stations um, at the workplace and each evening somebody went around and measured in milligrams how many uh, hand sanitizer was used in this day. So this is a good objective measure of uh, complying with the hand hygiene guideline. Uh, it might be a bad measure for other compliance behaviors because it might also pick up how much people move around the workplace. So what did we see? So here you get a figure of the 1,054 ratings that we elicited over 12 weeks. The first thing to notice is that own ratings are consistently higher than other ratings. Uh, the other thing to notice is because we measure everything uh, on a scale from one to seven, where seven means perfect compliance, that compliance levels are actually quite high. So the most important thing we can see from this graph is whether our uh, interventions had an effect on behavior. Um, so we measure statistical significance using some regression techniques in the paper. So here I'll just give you the gist of the results. So first of all, in uh, respect to our social norms intervention, which happened in week two and three, we see a significant effect in the first week and then no additional effect in the later weeks. Um, and that picture continues when we look at the other intervention. So when we look at our pledging intervention, then we see an uptick in compliance behavior that is particularly pronounced for the compliance behavior of others in the first week of the intervention, but not in the second week of the intervention. And if we look at the last intervention, the messenger intervention, then again, we see no effect when people were designing the posters but then a significant effect in the first week where the posters were displayed, but not anymore in the second week. Um, so in these regressions, we control for individual fixed effects and cluster standard errors at the individual level. And what we get is that the social norms intervention was significantly changing compliance behavior and there's weak significance for the pledge and the messenger intervention. 
Another thing to notice is that we get fast return to baseline. So you can see that in the fellow weeks after an intervention, we return to the initial um, um, compliance levels. And then most importantly, if you compare week one to week 12, then there is no additive long-term effect of all three interventions together. So we can see a small uptick for uh, others' compliance behavior and no change for own compliance behavior. And this uptick is not significant. Uh, what about hand sanitizer usage? Very similar picture. So we have 40 daily measurements. Overall, there's a positive time trend. So here seems to be a small additive effect of all our interventions. But importantly, there's no significant difference across intervention and fellow weeks. There's an initial shift of compliance behavior, but then no further increases. So to sum up, um, we have done one of the few field experiments on behavioral interventions on COVID-19 over the last summer. Um, we've seen significant but moderate effects of all interventions on reported compliance behavior. So there was no relationship with hand sanitizer usage whatsoever. And then very importantly, we see quick leveling off of effects. So there seems to be no long-term behavior change and high initial compliance levels, which means that we might be running into a ceiling effect, which might explain why the interventions of which we know that they typically are quite successful, didn't have a large effect on behavior, but a rather moderate effect on behavior. So thank you very much for listening. You can find the paper on your and you can follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much.